Dean Smith gets sacked tomorrow. Who, is, who do you appoint? You're probably wondering why you're seeing this video. This is basically a highlight clip that we've clipped out of our latest podcast from the Villafield podcast uh, that me and Dan Wiseman have done, basically talking about whether we are Smith in, Smith out, what we should do with the whole managerial situation. Before we get into this, though, if you haven't checked out the full podcast, it will be linked below in the description on YouTube and Spotify. As you can see, we're now on Spotify. The Villa Filler is getting big. Uh, and here we go. Let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this. Roll the intro. My, my dream is um, Rafa Benitez is sat in China uh, and that doesn't sit well with me. Um, I think we've seen a lot of players and managers go over there for a season or two, get the bag basically, uh, and then come back over. And I think if you... He only left Newcastle because Mike Ashley wouldn't promise him the cash. For some reason, made it, then promised it to Bruce and gave it him in abundance. But um, Rafa always made it clear that he wasn't getting the money. I think that was a large reason he he chose to leave. That's my dream appointment. That that is that is my that's my fantasy. Is is that um, I mean Everton picked up Carlo Ancelotti when they were only like three places above us at the time or something like that, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think. The Premier League attracts these kind of players and although he might not fancy the relegation fight, that would be my dream appointment. But um, obviously we saw the JT link, mate, and um, I don't know why. Um, I don't think he's particularly particularly ready for that, but uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know who the board would go with. I don't know about you. I mean, for, for all the defensive frailties, does JT really warrant no. the job? Sure I mean, not. I, I like JT. I, I, I've got a lot of time for him as, as a player um, and his professionalism is something to really be admired. But, I mean, he's he's a 38-year-old man who's doing rainbow flicks with Henry Lansbury on the training ground every day. That's what we're paying him for. Um, yeah. He's not head coach <laughs> material yet. And I, I, I think it, given, you know, he, if he puts the hours in with, you know, being a first team coach somewhere else I have no doubt that he'll be a good manager um, a player that good surely has to be but John Terry's not the, uh, the the man to be given the Aston Villa head coach if no. you want to call it that uh, role but it makes sense why else do you have him in even if he, I mean it's like the fact we even considered Thierry Henry mm -hmm. um it's good P if if you sack the man who supports the club who sweeps the terraces as a kid who's st stood in the stands as a fan um and who's really grinded to work his way to get the job then there has to be a better story so appointing a former captain mm -hmm. england captain chelsea legend premier league all-time great I think that's the only way the club potentially saves face because I think a lot of people, um, certainly on the outside, will go, "Oh, it didn't didn't go so well having your local man, mm. did it?" So I think yeah. uh, that's to be considered. But I mean, whoever it is, please, please, Villa, do not do not get Sam Allardyce. No. Otherwise, I will destroy this mic <laughs> as I just uh, did. Uh, yeah, I think we need um, someone to come in. Uh, you offer them. Uh, you know, Dean was to go tomorrow, a uh, contract until the end of the season, um, and then an option to re-sign. Um, I mean, realistically, if you get Sam Allardyce in, or someone, and we're saying Sam Allardyce because he's who the internet has decided has taken the job, does he keep us up? And if he doesn't, does he get a contract? Because if Allardyce doesn't keep us up, you may as well just give it to JT to the end of the season. 100%. It doesn't matter. I think we're down. The thing is, you look at the position of the table and before the Leicester game, it was um, two games in hand, a win takes you two points off safety, you win two, you're, yep. uh, I can't even count, five points off the relegation zone. That And that looks really healthy. And if you look at it now, if you try and put that same perspective on it, a win still takes you two points above safety. The problem is the game in hand is against Sheffield United. And we've still got to play West Ham. We've still got to play Everton. We've still got to play Newcastle. It's just not possible. 
I'm, I'm saying it now. This is this is usually a positive podcast. <laughs> Villa are down, and we're probably going to end up with Sam Allardyce. It's um, it doesn't make for pretty reading. Um, I think we um, Dean's time is unfortunately, I, I think, is is coming to an end. Um, uh, and the reason I say that was his um, just his naivety in the press conference. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, my, my dad texted me. He was like, he's just said with a straight face that we went out to be defensively solid. He, he said, I, there were quotes, like, he said that he's completely satisfied that the players turned up, um, that they w- we were just beaten by a better side. No. Um, the 4-0 scoreline was harsh on us, he said. Um, the signs of a desperate man, I think, unfortunately. Um, um, we, we gave Bruce so much stick for the things that he said after... Like defeats like that in the championship, yeah. and the pointless same old press conferences, um, and um, Dean's reaction after a couple of games. The Southampton game uh, was good. Uh, I was happy that he came out and was so openly critical. And to go from that in one league game, although there was a final in between, but in the very next league game, to contradict that so much uh, and to praise a performance that was worse than the one that we witnessed at St Mary's. Yeah. Um, it just seems so bizarre to me and I think the problem is with Dean now is that because he's starting to flip uh, flip flap and he, he's changed his mind on you know the formation that we got promoted with 4 3 3 he's turned his back on it and we moved to 3-5-2 and then he's turned his back on that and we've gone back to 4-3-3 and considering he's ch- now changed his mind in the press conferences he doesn't seem to have a grip on the, his squad um, I can't see the players looking at him and feeling the inspiration and the do or die attitude that okay we might as you say we'd be in, uh, relegated inevitably but just to give a make a fight of it and yeah. to go out there and believe Chester's essential to fulfilling this got potential it's the main man the hero he's the main leader of the gang nah. Chester Chester he's the main leader of the gang